going on guys welcome back to another episode of rusto mod in the last episode you saw us take our volkswagen turbo diesel and finally get it running in our 1950 willys wagon that we'd actually put the entire body on top of a newer jeep wrangler chassis then we figured out how to put this volkswagen turbo diesel into the jeep frame and we finally got it running now it's time to get the body ready to go so we can go back onto the frame so the next thing we have to do is we installed our seats and our steering column in a previous episode and we're trying to get the interior dialed in so that way the body is ready to go back onto the frame. Now one big gripe that we did have when we initially bought the Jeep is we did not like the way that the dashboard was laid out. Originally these Jeeps were imported into Brazil and they have a right and left hand drive dashboard layout so it has a glove box on both sides of the dash and it has a gauge cluster in the center of the dash now that's a pretty neat thing that they did back in the day just to save some money but we weren't really big fans of how the dash was laid out so we wanted to give it our own touch to it now a big gripe with doing modern dashes in old vehicles is they just look out of place and sometimes you take a newer dashboard and putting it into an older car just doesn't look right, it doesn't fit the character of the rest of the vehicle. So we didn't want to give it too much of a modern take, we still wanted it to pay homage to the original 1950 Willys that it represents, but we wanted to give it a little bit of slight Rusto Mod modern touches to it. Now in a previous episode you saw us put our Willys wagon interior together with some Volvo seats that we found actually in a junkyard, a steering column, we got our pedals mounted and everything like that. So now's a good time to start working on this dash. So what we started to do is we needed to figure out how we're going to design it and we're going to do so in a CAD program called IronCAD, the same program that we used in our Rambler build. Now, it's really difficult to be able to measure everything like we did in the Rambler build with the Faro arm because we're measuring surfaces. So, I ended up finding a phone app called Hedges, and this app basically takes your phone camera and uses point cloud data to be able to scan surfaces, and it worked really well on this Jeep dash. So, I ended up scanning the entire Jeep dash in the app and then uploading it to IronCAD so we could be begin designing the entire Jeep dash from scratch. Now, another thing that we're also gonna have to incorporate into the dash is we wanna add some modern touches like a radio, navigation, maybe Apple CarPlay, some stuff like that, but we don't want it to be cheesy or too modern to really take away from the classic look of the vehicle. So we wanna find a hitaway radio that will be stored inside the dash so that way it will pop out but we can put it back and you can't tell that it's in there and we also have to be able to incorporate heat and air conditioning ducts because this vehicle had never been made with heat or air conditioning all right so now we know what we want now let's try to see how we can scan this dash bring it into cad so we can start making it so some people have actually already made custom dashes for these willies and there's a few takes that gave us some inspiration as this one's pictured here where all the gauges are just moved to the left. Now we didn't really like the big blank spot in the middle of the dash so we still wanted to kind of incorporate some of the old willies design and leave some of that stuff but then kind of grow and expand on that. So with that in mind we'll start scanning the Jeep dash with our Hedges phone app. So basically what you do is you basically take a video of the dash, but it's actually just collecting points and you're just basically scanning the entire dash to see all the edges. It does take a little bit to get every single point and to get all the angles of the dash, but we want it to be careful and get the radius on the glove box area to the gauge area right in the middle of the dash. We really wanted to utilize that radius in the new design of the dash that we're going to make. That way it doesn't look like we had added it, it looks like it came that way from the factory. So now that we got our dash scanned, let's put it in IronCAD and start designing this thing. What we did is Cade got a new iPhone and he downloaded uh, an app called Hedges that does 3D scanning because the, the, the new iPhones have LiDAR built into them and surprisingly it did a pretty good job for a five dollar app or whatever it was uh but what we got now is uh it completely unusable <laughs> in terms of modifying this scan at all it uh it allows us to uh to go in and, and at least get uh, the, the scale and the shape of everything 
uh, that's there. So we get the major features. So if you zoom in on this a bit, and I don't want to touch this because it puts the computer to sleep. This is like a 150 meg, meg file, but you can see the knobs, for example, down here. You know, you're not getting a lot of uh, detailed definition, but you're getting the general flow of the uh, of of the structure. So you can see you get all the radiuses in here and all the transition points. So extremely valuable, extremely helpful. So uh, it was pretty tedious to, to work with this uh, in here to get our solids lined up to it uh, because it just goes to sleep whenever you touch these big point cloud scans. And uh, but anyway, uh, at the end of the day, it was definitely worthwhile, and it it's it's pretty uh, pretty functional at the end of the day. So we took that, laid out uh, the center dash panel essentially, uh, and started working from there. All right. So, like I say, we took the, the scan of the dash, and then what we ended up drawing was uh, the center section of the of the dash, since that's going you know, to basically be our foundation. So that's in the middle of the vehicle. Uh, had uh, this piece of trim here. <clears throat> that uh, had housed the gauges, uh, sat underneath the speedometer, and we, we had the ashtray here. So what we did is we went ahead and mocked in uh, the radio uh, setup as to where we wanted that. We added air conditioning vents uh, to that because the original vehicle had heat but no air conditioning. Uh, we're going to put uh, electric air conditioning in it of all things. So. There's the radio that fits in the center there. Like I say, we're trying to have it least impactful visually on the inside of the vehicle. Probably when it's all said and done, it won't look that bad. The chrome of the knobs and so forth kind of line up with the rest of the interior uh, trim pieces that were chrome. And then what we've done from there is you can see that on the center section, we don't have it shown here, but you can look at the original, the original scan over here that this dips down in here where the glove box is. And so this section is here. So we tried to mimic that step up, or that step up from the glove box to the center section, and then we step up one more time to get to the gauge panel. So these going, to, this is where we're going to uh, house a more traditional set of gauges that, that are in here. There's our gauge setup that we're looking at: speedometer, tack, uh, the usual gauge. We've got a boost gauge, uh, but we also have a series of indicator lights that uh, they were integrating in. And you can also see that we've got a uh, an AC vent on that side of the dash uh, integrated into the into the gauge panel and then we've got an AC vent on the opposite side over here doing the passenger side since there was nothing in there originally and then there's our steering wheel so you know kind of getting a look at it from from the driver's perspective you know this is kind of what you're going to see you know as, as you're driving a vehicle the, the gauges are tilted more in line with uh, your line of sight and then the center section has uh, what we've done is take the gauges out and we've integrated our HVAC control. So we've got fan, AC, this is vent between uh, floor and uh, defrost, and then pull in and out to actually, this is a cable that will turn our heat on and off in the vehicle. Uh, got a key, uh, an ignition key set up here, the original type switches. We've got a double pole, double throw uh, modern switch that, that are lit. So we're using that for the headlights for park and headlights as well as the wipers, low and high. And then this is our another pool cable that we'll use for the uh, for the timing advance for cold starting on the uh, on the diesel. We've also got another little light here that lights up. It's it's a it's a black flat flush, actually technically a switch, uh, but it stays uh, you know out of the way visually. Uh, but this is just an indicator light that the AC compressor is running. This is actually the radio that's going to go in there. So we, we took a picture of that, scanned it in there, and put it in. And we've got our, of course, got our Rusto Mod logo uh, engraved in the uh, in the surround for the for the radio. And then we've got flappers that are that we've 3D printed. Uh, got the ductwork behind here. Anyway, that's what uh, that's what we have planned for the dash. Should bring uh, the 1950 Willys into the year 2023 uh, with all the modern technology that, that we can expect to have without uh, impacting the way the vehicle drives or performs. All right, so now that we got our entire dashboard laid out on how we want it to look, now this is the hard part. Now we have to make the entire thing. So we're going to CNC all those pieces that we just showed you in CAD and we're going to make them into a reality. 
So we're going to start with the gauge panels and the radio bezels and all the other stuff that we have to machine and then we'll start working on the sheet metal fabrication of the dash portion. These things came out really good. I really love the Rusto Mod Garage logo right into the center of it. And these small pieces are going to go where the key and headlight parts were. And then this is the radio surround that's going to go in the middle of the dash right above where the original Jeep piece was. And these are our new gauge panels. We actually incorporated the Willys logo right into it. And this is how everything pretty much looks like put together with the gauges inserted into them. and. This is how everything will look with the extension with some other gauges and vents and stuff like that incorporated into the gauge pods. So it turned out really nice. So now we can start working on the sheet metal fabrication part of the rest of the dashboard. Now we ended up just water jetting the profile that we had created in IronCAD. We cut that out pretty easily and then now we're going to have to bend it into shape. Now it's really critical that we bend it correctly because remember we want to kind of mimic the original Jeep dash and the radiuses that it used initially so it doesn't look like it has been added on. It looked like it was made that way. So we took our original scan that we did drew it in iron cat and then now we're going to try to bend the piece with our press brake to be able to mimic that design so now steve our press brake operator is going to bend this thing up to try to match that radius that we called out for and we're going to see how the thing looks in our jeep dashboard Alright, so now that Steve bent that piece up, we can try to see how it's going to fit into our Willys dash here. So before we start cutting the dash out, we want to make sure it looks exactly how we imagined it would look. So we got our steering column, we got our seats, and we're just going to rough fit it up into place. Make sure everything is perfect before we cut anything. So we got to make sure that the bend is in the right spot and it, the gauges are in the right spot so you can see them with the steering wheel in the way and whenever you drive it what gauges are going to go where make sure all that is perfect before you start welding everything so now we kind of got an idea of what it's going to look like with our steering wheel into place so now we can go ahead and cut out the section that we need and then tack it into place All right, so now that Don got that dash cut out, we can fit our new dashboard and it's gonna look just like that. So all we gotta do is weld this new one in place. So you can see the difference and how we can have a variety of gauges and everything else right in front of it, but trying to maintain the look of the old Jeep with the styling and everything else. So it's gonna be pretty cool. All right, so now that it's cut out, the only thing left to do is to tack it into place and see how it looks. So Don's gonna tack this thing into place and we're gonna see how the dashboard looks in the Jeep after all this designing and work going into this thing. Pretty much one of the coolest elements of this build in my opinion. So it's really exciting to see how it's gonna turn out. Now, another thing I forgot to mention is that we're going to put heat vents in this, as you saw in the middle of the dash. So Don's putting a passenger side heat and air conditioning vent. So it's pointed right at the passenger. So that way this thing will have HVAC, just like a modern vehicle, but trying to make it look like an old car. All right, so this is what it looks like all tacked in the place. And you can see we kind of have a mock-up in 
the dashboard area and then also how it's going to look with the center section with the radio bezels and everything like that so it's pretty much almost ready to go don's finishing that up and he can start to weld this thing for real and all right that's just with our gauges installed and it's completely welded now we still have to do the middle section and we're going to have to body work some of the creases that we had to do just from welding but that's basically what it's going to look like and that's the final product thank you guys so much for watching this is a lot of work in this episode Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe so we can continue to do more awesome things like this. And go check out our patina party car show that we're having August 13th at Maryland International Raceway. Hope to see you guys on the next episode. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you then.